Yes. Aortic valve stenosis is simply, simply uh, speaking, a progressive narrowing of the aortic valve. The aortic valve is the main valve in the heart which regulates the amount of flow, blood flow, out of the heart. As the valve develops calcium deposits with advanced age, it narrows and limits the amount of blood flowing out of the heart into the aorta and the rest of the body. This poses a load and forces the heart to work and pump much harder, uh, which eventually leads to uh, cardiac failure, heart failure, and potentially death. The traditional approach to aortic valve replacement was, of course, uh, heart surgery. But as you can imagine, uh, since it is disease and condition of the aging population, many older patients were too high, um, or, uh, were uh, at a high risk of uh, complications associated with cardiac surgery, and were not and, and were not candidates uh, for uh, surgical uh, treatment. Transcatheter aortic valve replacement, or TAVR, is a minimally invasive approach to replacing a diseased aortic heart valve uh, through techniques uh, where we can actually enter in the body either through a blood vessel in the leg or perhaps through other areas in the chest. The basic steps are uh, for the patient to come into the cardiac catheterization laboratory. Uh, in general, our patients are simply sedated. They're not put under general anesthesia. At that point, the operators will work on placing catheters in the arteries that feed the legs, the femoral arteries. And once we are across the valve, we can then deliver a catheter that has a valve that is mounted on the catheter across the patient's disease heart valve. The new transcatheter heart valve is placed directly within the patient's diseased heart valve. And once that valve is deployed, the old heart valve is pushed aside. So the new valve is placed within the old valve, and the new valve starts working immediately. At the present time, uh, transcatheter aortic valve replacement is approved for patients who are considered high risk or intermediate risk for standard open heart surgery. Patients who may be low risk for standard open heart surgery are not yet approved for TAVR. However, they are being evaluated in a clinical trial. At the Brigham Women's Hospital, we have been performing TAVR since 2008 because we were involved in a clinical trial. The TAVR became commercially available from 2011, and we have been using the commercially available TAVR since then. We have done close to 700 cases, including all the re clinical trial cases um, in total. The heart team consists of not only physicians, but to start off with, it's the cardiac surgeons, the interventional cardiologist. We have two each in our program. In addition to that, we have multiple cardiac anesthesiologists that are involved in our program, as well as radiologists, including the cardiac radiologists. So we don't just focus on the disease or the interventions that we do. We treat the patients together. On top of that, we have a structural program coordinator who coordinates all the patient scheduling, as well as the upcoming patients. And also we have multiple research associates um, who are involved in our program because we are involved heavily in the clinical research aspect. So the choice of a patient as to where the procedure will be done is a very important one. We think at the Brigham and Women's Hospital that we have a very well-founded structural heart team uh, that is multidisciplinary. On top of that, we have a building that is state-of-the-art, the Shapiro building, uh, that's approximately 10 years in existence, where patients can come in, they have private rooms, uh, they have room for their family to be with them during their hospitalization, and we think that's a really important aspect of their care. Uh, the most exciting thing about being part of this program is just being surrounded by a group of dedicated, extremely smart individuals that are hoping to push the envelope and hoping to really advance care for some of these patients. On the horizon, we have many trials that we've been asked to participate in. There is an advancing technology in this field that's very exciting. I think in the next few years, we'll see many new valves, many new procedures, and we're really leading uh, the charge here in northeastern United States in terms of being able to offer these to patients.